There are several ways of classifying languages, phonologically, on the basis of several segmental and suprasegmental parameters, or structurally, on the basis of the internal structure of their words. The syntactic classification, which is the focus of this e-lecture, defines languages on the basis of their word order. and the relationship between heads and modifiers. How this is done and what types of languages can be identified using this parameter will be discussed in the following. But what exactly is word order? Well, let's illustrate this on the basis of a simple declarative sentence in present-day English. In this example, the order of the words would be adverb, determiner, adjective, noun, verb, pronoun, determiner and noun. So this is the order of the words. However, in looking at each category too many possibilities would emerge and too few generalizations across languages could be made. Thus, word order is not defined as the ordering of the words within a sentence, but as the ordering of the functional elements within a sentence. Now, these functional elements here, of course, are adverbial, subject, verb, object and complement. Two of these functions, however, are not representative for the classification of the languages of the world. The adverbial, for example, is often mobile. We could say, my old friend called me a fool yesterday. And mobility, of course, is not a good parameter for a classification in terms of ordering. And the object complement here, a fool, is by and large dependent on specific verbs and by the way there's also a subject complement. Hence these two functional elements are normally excluded from the typological classification of the languages of the world and we get as a result the three central syntactic functions subject, verb and object as the main parameters for the typological classification of the languages of the world in terms of syntax. Now this provides us with six theoretically possible word order patterns. For example, we could think of languages that exhibit the subject verb object order. Or languages that use a subject object verb ordering pattern or languages that use the verb subject object pattern. So these are three possibilities. Further possibilities could be a verb object subject pattern. Then we could think of languages that use the object in the first position, then the subject comes second and the verb is final, or the other way around, object verb subject structures. So these are the theoretically possible patterns and it is quite interesting that the majority of the languages of the world uses this pattern where the subject in each of these cases precedes the object. Patterns where the subject follows the object are marginal. So it is the first three ordering types that constitute a parameter for the classification of the languages of the world. Let's illustrate this using actual examples. Now we all know that English is a language which exhibits the SVO word order. Turkish is an example of an SOV language and the Arabic languages here illustrated by the Saudi Arabian flag 
are languages where the verb comes first. So these are our three main types. All other types are marginal. For example, VOS is exhibited by a language called Malagasy, spoken in Madagascar. And even less representative is OVS, spoken in Brazil. The language is called Hiscariana and it only has a handful of native speakers. And an OSV order is often associated with a language spoken in the Caucasian area. The language is called Kabardian, but it is highly disputed whether the word order is really OSV. So these are the main patterns and we know that SVO, SOV, VSO are the constitute the majority of the languages of the world. But how do we establish the basic word order of a language? How do we find out whether a language is SVO, SOV, etc.? Well, let's illustrate this using present-day English. In present-day English, declarative sentences, and these are the sentence types we're using, the following word order types can be found or not. Well, we know that English typically has SVO patterns, a sentence like the man saw the woman. What about SOV? Well, SOV is impossible in present-day English. You wouldn't find an example that exhibits this word order pattern. VSO, the third of the majority types, is possible in present-day English. Never has the man seen the woman. However, as you may note, there is an adverbial that is fronted. So we have never, the adverbial, then has, the inflected component of the verb, the man, the subject, and the woman, the object. However, this construction is restricted in many ways. The adverbial has to be negative. Never has the man seen the woman works, but very often has the man seen the woman does not. The next ordering pattern is the, would be the VOS order. Never has the woman seen the man superficially looks fine. However, if you remember, the woman is now the object and we can illustrate this by replacing them, the object with a pronoun, with a case mark pronoun and then you can clearly see that never has her seen he is totally impossible. Now, the fifth ordering pattern, OSV, is normally not used in present-day English, the woman the man saw. However, there are cases of object fronting where the subject is case marked, the subject has to be a pronoun, so something like the woman he saw is possible, but as you see, the subject is now a pronoun which is case marked. And finally, the OVS word order is impossible. Again, you would first of all see, oh, the woman saw the man is possible, but however, this would be an SVO example, but with the woman as the object, it is of course impossible, as you can see, if you replace it by a pronoun, her, saw, he, is clearly impossible. Now what do we do with these findings? Well, we could say that in present-day English declarative sentences, the overwhelming majority of the sentences exhibits the SVO word order, that is the first type. Thus, present-day English is an SVO language. And this can easily be supported by the analysis of English text corpora. However, as we will see later, we have to be careful here. Now, over and above the basic word order patterns, there are a number of so-called head modifier constructions whose internal ordering is highly revealing with regard to the basic configuration of a language. The typologist Joseph Greenberg found out in the middle of the 20th century that there are typical correlations between the order of the basic functional elements like subject, verb, object and these head modifier patterns. So let's look at such head modifier relationships in more detail. Now, of course, if you look at them, you have two possibilities. The head can precede the modifier or the modifier can precede the head. Now here are some examples. Probably the most well-known head modifier construction is the verb object construction. Since verbs determine the choice and depending on the language 
the case of their objects. They constitute the heads in such constructions and their objects are the modifiers. Well, here are two examples, whereas in present-day English the verb always precedes the object, so you could say something like to eat rice is one of my goals today. In Japanese the object, that is the modifier, precedes its head. Kome o tabe. Here is another example. The relationship between nouns and adjectives. Nouns determine the choice, maybe the gender and the case, of their adjectives. So nouns are clearly the heads in such constructions. And adjectives, the modifiers. Now let's look at English. Well, here the situation is a little bit difficult. We have exceptional constructions where the noun precedes, the head precedes the modifier, as in the president-elect. However, you would agree with me that the majority of constructions of this type have the adjective, that is the modifier, in the first position, that is a modifier head construction. In Japanese, the situation is clear. Okina Hong the big book is clearly organized as a modifier head pattern. So in English here this is slightly problematic. Another well-known head modifier pattern concerns at positions, but what are at positions? Well, at positions, well the term at position is a head term for on the one hand prepositions where the at position precedes its noun phrase or postpositions where the ad position follows its noun phrase. Now, obviously, the ad position is always the head of such constructions because, again, depending on the language, it determines the choice and maybe the case of the noun phrase that has to follow. So, ad positions are heads. Well, and how is this organized? in English and Japanese. Well, in English clearly we have prepositions only in the book. So the preposition, the adpositional type, precedes its modifier. And in Japanese it's the other way around, hongo nakani, where the noun phrase, the modifier, precedes its head. So we have postpositions in Japanese. Now, the Typologist Joseph Greenberg, as I already mentioned, found out that there are typical correlations between the basic word order, SVO, SOV, VSO, etc., and these head modifier patterns. For example, he found out by investigating a large number of languages that SOV languages typically have modifier head patterns. So, these are the patterns that are used in SOV languages. Whereas languages where either the verb precedes is at the beginning of a sentence or languages like SVO typically have head modifier patterns. So, these are then the ideal correlations between the basic word order and the organization of heads and modifiers. Well, let's look at the languages that we are interested in. Here is English. Now, English is clearly a head modifier language. The verb precedes its object. English has prepositions. The adjectival parameter is a little bit problematic. We have modifier head constructions in things like the big book, but we also have adjectival constructions where the adjecti adjective follows the noun as in the president-elect, but the majority of the ordering patterns is head modifier. Now the other way around, Japanese is an example. In Japanese we have modifier head patterns, very clearly. So Japanese would be then an SOV language, whereas English is almost exclusively SVO. Sometimes there are languages that represent both. For example, in German we find both patterns, object-verb constructions in subordinate clauses, 
and verb object constructions in main clauses. We have adjectives that precede their heads, but we also have prepositions and postpositions in, in constructions like in dem Buch, we have a preposition, and meiner Meinung nach, we have a postposition. So German is obviously a mixed type language. Another language which is a little bit peculiar is Persian. Now Persian has a strict SOV order but prepositions. So despite the formal clarity of basic word order patterns and head modifier ordering, languages are often not that well organized and are open to exceptions. Well, and there are further problems. In specific texts, whether spoken or written, we may find that the basic word order of a language is much less clear than elsewhere. Suppose you had to work out the basic word order of present-day English on the basis of this text. What would it be? Well, this text, of course, is part of a famous song, so let's listen first. Okay, here we go. Nights in white satin Never reaching the end Letters are written Never meaning to sin Beauty that I'd always missed With his eyes before Just what the truth is I can say anymore Yes, I love you Yes, I love you Well, a wonderful song, I think. Well, but let's now concentrate on linguistics again. So, I suggest you stop the e-lecture here and try an analysis, a functional analysis in terms of subject, verb, object, adverbial and complement. So, are you ready? Here are the results. Now, in the first sentence, we clearly have an SVO structure. The verb reaching, however, is non-finite, but that's uh, the freedom of the writer of the lyrics. Nights in white setting never reached or reaching the end. Then we have an object fronted structure, letters with an internal relative clause, never meaning to send and there's no subject. So an object verb structure. Beauty I'd always missed is clearly object fronting. The object beauty precedes the subject I and then we have the verb and some adverbials. And the final line, what the truth is, is clearly the object. It is an object clause. I is the subject and can't say the verb. So here are the ordering patterns. Well, what do these patterns suggest? Is English then a modifier head structure language where the object precedes the verb? Well, probably not. But what I wanted to illustrate with this is that we have to be very careful with the choice of data if we want to establish the basic word order of a language. So let's summarize. The syntactic classification of languages is mainly based on the sequence of the functional elements of clause structure in declarative sentences. That is, on the basis of subject, verb and object. Since most languages, under certain circumstances, may deviate from their basic word orders and allow alternatives, for example object fronting in present-day English, Additional ordering patterns may provide further information. 
the illustration and exemplification of the way languages arrange their central functional elements has been the goal of this e-lecture. I hope I could help you a little bit on that.